And then pick this up off the floor. That doesn't belong on the floor. Oh, hi. Today, uh, very straightforward. I'm I just uh, uh, planning on upgrading my NAS box. It's going to take a moment there for it to turn off. Now, right now, it has a four terabyte red drive in it. And today, I'm putting in a 10 terabyte red drive. Should be pretty straightforward, right? Now, I'm not going to bother with the make and model of this thing because it's an older model and it's, you know, decent at best. Not sure I necessarily recommend it, but it is kind of imperative to my general management of my fleet of computers. Now, normally you would just stick a, a bigger drive in the second bay and let her have her, but that's not quite the case here. There's my 4T, still looking as fresh as the day I bought it, September 2013. Well, that gives a perspective on how long I've had this thing. In the first and primary bay, I have like a, a simple 500 gig SSD. And this guy is uh, uh, quite a few of my user folders. In fact, my desktop's on this guy. Doesn't matter what computer I sit down at, my desktop is the same, along with uh, my downloads and a couple other key folders. Uh, sloppy plastic. Now, of course, the four terabyte is my bulk storage. And you know, it's it's mostly full. It has space left on it, but the controversy is here that I'm trying to phase out the spin drive in my main system, which is an additional three terabytes that's at least half full. And there's not gonna be enough room on this for me to transfer everything from that drive onto this one. So with a 10 terabyte, it should be able to handle most of my bulk storage. Of course, as a YouTuber, I have way more storage than this, but I don't keep my video on my NAS. My NAS is just for personal use. It's also gonna add to the convenience when I'm working on some of these other computers you see me working on because my, uh, what I call MISC archives, which is basically uh, folders full of all the applications I've downloaded over the years that I might use to set up a new computer, they're locked on that main spin drive. I wanna be able to access them over the network without that computer on. So I pretty much wanna get all that put over here. Now, why this is controversial is because as you're gonna see, this doesn't use a standard file system. I believe it's Linux based and well, I only know about Windows. I don't know anything about Linux. All I know is that I cannot access those files on my main computer, which makes me kind of nervous because if that NAS box dies, I'm gonna have little options to actually get my data off of this. Fortunately, most of it is backed up onto other hard drives, so I'm not too worried about it. But what I'm hoping today is that I can just blanket clone this drive over to this drive, extend the partition, pop her in there like nothing ever happened, and then have more space. I'm not sure if it's gonna be that straightforward, but either way, let's go find out. All right, situated here at the main computer, we're gonna go ahead and get these drives inserted into my hot swap base. I gotta put the four tear in the top and the Ted tear in the bottom here. Hot swap, oh, I like my hot swap, buds. As you can see, if you can see my desktop, it is blank because the NAS is offline. I can't get at a lot of my files right now, but hopefully I'm not gonna really need any to do this. Now I could probably run the NAS with just that one uh, drive in place and be able to continue my work without the use of the bulk storage. I can go without it for now, but either way, I need to hammer into device manager because these newer setups don't quite detect hot swap as efficiently as I would like. And nothing's popping up because because Windows can't do anything. Now we're gonna run my old trusty Paragon hard disk manager. Oh, look at this mess right here. It appears the 10T is partitioned twice. That's weird. It came straight from Western Digital like that. This is the biggest drive I've owned and I do not understand. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's the MFT file system. Okay, that explains it. Halterp. okay. Don't know why we got this here. That might have to do with Windows. Now we got one raw buddy here. Now, here is my four terabyte. As you can see, it says not formatted, not formatted, not formatted, not formatted, unallocated, not formatted. I swear I've opened this disk drive in something resembling hard disk manager before and it told me what kind of file systems it was using, but right now it's just, it's not recognizing any of them. The question is, can I go copy hard disk, grab that four terabyte drive, pop it over to here, and then, well, we would do a raw copy so that it just directly 
reads the disc and copies it over. This is what I'm hoping is gonna work for me. And then hopefully I can extend this partition after. Now, one situation that I had fathomed is um, if I just take that 10 terabyte drive and pop it in there, the NAS box will initialize it in such a way that it can start using it, but it'll be an empty drive. And I'm wondering if any of these partitions down here will be proportionally different sized for a, a drive this much bigger. You never know. I know what to do. Now, if I take the SSD from there and I compare the data on it to the data I'm seeing here, maybe that'll give me a better perspective of how I should be going about this. Whoa, eight hours and six minutes. Um, this is gonna be a terrible experience. Huh, nine hours, that number just keeps going up. That almost suggests that it's not doing anything. Let's see our performance here. Hard disk nine, 156 write speed. Hard disk eight. Well, it's transferring, yeah. A raw copy takes a long time because whether or not there's data there or not, it's gonna copy. So it's copying the full four terabytes. Oh, okay. So if we look here, yeah, 10 gigs, 10 gigs, two gigs, 10, 10, two, 5, 12, 5, 11, nine, then the space. So it looks like it's going to likely make the same size partitions. This is weird. I can't do anything to these guys on here. Can't look at them or nothing. At least Windows can tell their partitions anyway. So I, oh geez, that number just keeps going up, man. This is a very committed project. This is doing me a concern. If I knew it was gonna be running this much time, I wouldn't be using this computer for it. It's almost 5 p.m. now. That means this thing's gonna keep going till like 5 a.m. 13 hours. I guess my computer is going to be running all day and all night long and we're going to find out tomorrow whether or not this works. So, wow, that number just keeps climbing. So it's pretty much the next day and um, it didn't quite take 12 to 14 hours like the counter initially said. It took more like eight or nine hours. Either way, not an insignificant amount of time. <laughs> Some of y'all are probably laughing because there might be easier ways to do this, but this is the way I did it. And oh, bring this disc online. And there it is. We have our clone. Everything seems to be copacetic. Now we have nothing to lose because I'm not sure if this is actually gonna work. We're gonna resize this partition. Oh, we can't just drag it like we, wait, can we? Uh, no, no. Are we unable to resize this partition? Oh, great. How do we work around this, sir? Okay, we can move it. Okay, well, um, we appear to have a difficulty. What happens if I restart it now that it's online? Now can we resize? No, still cannot resize. Okay, so we have some further troubleshooting to do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop it into the NAS and we're gonna see if this even works because <laughs> I'm worried that it's not going to. Workshop is a bit hectic right now, yes. I don't think the NAS box itself has provisions to extend the partition. It might have provisions to make another partition and then add it, which, you know, I'd rather not do. Why does that not line up? Does this not fit together? Look at that. This drive does not fit in this carrier for some reason. Oh, this drive doesn't have little holes here like other drives do, yet this guy has little pitons. Well, I'm gonna have to sacrifice that piton. Mm. Snip. Need that to be a little flatter. There you go, shave it down. There we go, now it's good. I'll just put that in there. You know, I don't even know if my NAS will support a 10 gig drive. It was not validated for it back in the day, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Now we just have to wait about 10 minutes for that thing to boot up. Takes a while. You know, if that thing didn't still work pretty well, I, 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 would, I would justify replacing it by now. Really? Bod, we're going on 16 minutes now. Oh boy, Bod. Oh boy. NAS, it's been much time. You can come online now. It's not gonna hurt ya. Just give me that little beep, bud. That little beepy. Just go beep and then spin down your fan so I can start accessing you. Because the way my networks are set up, I'm trying to install a program that I think might be able to access the drive, but it errors out because it can't compute space requirements because it can't access <laughs> my desktop and shares because they're on the NAS, which is offline. So this is fun times. 
I wonder if it's taking a whole new long time because it's it's confused by that drive. That could very well be the situation. My timer's on 33 minutes now. How long it's taking that machine to come back online is starting to do me a concern. As long as the data on the 500 gig SSD remains safe, no problem. I could take a loss on that hard drive because obviously just cloning it over might not be the best solution, but <laughs> uh, this, is, this is taking a while. It's gonna be doing something though. It's day three and it is still hasn't come online yet. Now, uh, when you install a fresh drive into a NAS box of this nature, I know specifically mine, it does take some time for it to initialize the drive and do its thing. Indeed, a 10 terabyte drive, I could expect it to take a while, especially if it's doing a full fresh format. That could take several hours on a 10 terabyte drive. But at this point, it's probably been almost a full 24 hours, so... Either way, I think it's safe to say it didn't take the clone. In the meantime, because I depend on my NAS, I haven't been able to access my user folders for, you know, a day now, and I got some stuff I gotta get caught up on. At the very least, I should reset that machine with the SSD and make sure that it hasn't screwed that up. So, question is, will it let me just turn it off, or is it hung up? Okay, that's the, I'm gonna turn off now beep. Okay, there it is. All right, let's pull this drive offline. Let's turn her back online with the normal drive or my SSD, I should say, and make sure my user folders are still active. Oh, she's quiet now. Oh, that sounds promising. The fan spun down. Come on now, you can do it. It's normal for it to take some time first booting up. I'm actually nervous now. Ah, ding, fries are done. Okay, if I go online now, go to say downloads. Oh, okay, good. Uh, all my important user folders are still there. Maybe I should run a backup before I continue screwing around. All right, let's get this in the hot swap, sir. Okay, it looks identical to the way I left it. Well, the trick here is I'm trying to determine if there's a way to read ext4 file systems. That's apparently what it is. There's this, um, Disk internals, D disk internals. Let, let's try this one. I've, I've tried various applications to do this before and I've yet to have success doing it. Okay, where is it? Linux RAID partition, okay, it's recognizing it. Okay, this guy here. Oh, it looks like this can read it. Ah, oh, see, RAID is damaged, recovery is possible. I'm thinking maybe the clone just didn't take. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna try next, is I'm gonna flush this drive out, start from scratch, <laughs> pop it in there, and have it set up a brand new fresh drive. And then at least if I start off with a new blank thing, if I can use a reader like this to get the data off the original drive, because that's my biggest problem on trying these clone tricks. Some of y'all out there in YouTube land are probably like laughing like, <laughs> if you just set up Linux like you should have in the first place, you'd be able to read this. Freaking Windows, me, me, me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Linux is better than Windows, but it doesn't accommodate my needs. So I never got into it. I just want to make sure that this is going to work. So let's grab a file here. Apparently there's some export function. Save, export wizard, save files, output folder. Um, where are all my folders? G's good. Go, go, completing. And did it work? Hey, okay, good. I have a way to get files off this drive now. We'll just be exporting from the original four terabyte drive onto the new NAS and oh my God, that is gonna take forever. At least we have some promise now. I can access my NAS drives on my windows. I finally found a utility that's gonna do it. Disk internals. Okay, in the meantime, in the meantime, I gotta flush that drive out and start her over from scratch. It's not formatted. It doesn't recognize any of these. It's not formatted. Oh. Get rid of it. <laughs> this was eight hours of freaking. I wanted to say this is eight hours of work, but it wasn't work. It was just process time. Bye. See you later. And she's done. <sighs> I guess we'll go ahead and install it. Should be able to hot swap it. It's a NAS after all. Well, let's take this offline. Oh, she's still spinning. Gently, gently. Doop -a doop -a doop -a doop -a doop -a doop. Are you smart enough to take a hot plug or are you gonna crash, bud? I hear her spinning. Okay, can we refresh this list here? 
Uh, if we go create, oh, there it is. It found that new disc, counted as available. Next, combine multiple drives. I don't want to, well, I guess that's the way it works. Raid ID, I call it the, the 10, the 10 tank. There we go, not the master raid. That's the 500 gig, encryption, no passwords. Next, ah, yeah, 64-bit EXT4, stripe size, disc one, JBOD, 10 tank, submit. If I remember correctly, stripe size is good because if you have small files, they can waste large stripes. Larger stripes are faster, but smaller stripes are more optimized. Raid gonna stop after the finish button during the raid, finish. Do we refresh? Tank format. Okay, this might take a while, but at least we're seeing some progress. Finally, after three days, third day's the charm, right buds? And you're not screwing with my main drive, right? Like my desktop's on the raid, so if I can still access my desktop files, then we're good. But it's good to see it will support a 10 terabyte. I was worried that it wouldn't support it, but SATA's open like that. Like when you buy something like this and it says, oh, supports up to four terabyte drives. That means it's just, you know, that's the biggest drive they validated it on it. Doesn't mean that's the biggest drive it's ever gonna work with. Well, I guess we just wait for this to format now. If it's not doing a quick format and it's doing a raw, like full format, it could take a while. So, ah, uh, it's a waiting game again. I guess we'll see. Oh. That didn't take long at all. There it is. There it is. Oh, ho, 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 big nas, big nas, big nas. And now we have to go to the shared folder situation. Okay, so in order to do this, I have to go add a folder, tell it to go to the 10 tank, uh, public, yeah, sure, folder name. I like um, keeping in line with their strategy, so so I'm pretty much taking everything off my hard drive and putting it there. And I call my G drive my archives drive, archives G. It's been like that for decades now. So basically, I guess that's it. Apply, yes, please wait. So that means now, if I go into my network shares, oh look, it showed up in quick access already. How did that happen? That should be a 10 terabyte folder now. Okay, let's get the four terabyte online with the old data. Now let's run that new cutesy little application that I found. And then right here should have all my old folders. So there's the NAS archives folders I made. I wanna directly import those. My MISC folders are what I, I download my apps to. So MISC 14 is the smallest folder. It's the newest one. Let's go save. Next, browse. Um, this is a glitch here. How am I gonna tell it to go to the NAS? Ah, this is the feature I'm looking for, map network drive. Yeah, Z will do. There we go. Ah, there we go. And it'll report free space now, so we can watch that pupper fill up as we fill it up. So now if we just go here, tell it to go to uh, the Z drive, nixt. Z does not exist or could not attain privileges to write. Oh. Oh, you are a troublesome monkey. It's a public folder. And this is a problem ever since Windows Update. 1709, everything just worked. Run as administrator. Cause like, I don't want to buffer this. I don't want to have to copy it to a drive and then transfer it over. I want to go direct to the Z drive. Next, could not obtain privileges to write. What the? Yeah, okay, wow. Uh, more fun, more, more fun. More fun times working around stupid Windows networking. Okay, uh, more troubleshooting, more troubleshooting. I'm gonna have to research on this. Adding a network drive completely bricks my computer's network. I can't get onto my NAS with a network drive. It's a problem that occurred with Windows Update after 1709. It's the reason why some of the older support systems I refuse to run Windows Update on, like Tape Server is on 1709 because I know it'll just work. And I don't use that system for anything else. And I don't even have it plugged into the network. However, I'm going to because it's going to support this function, I think. Disconnect network drive. Tuh. Do you see that blipping? I couldn't even get screen capture to turn on right now because the computer's just jammed. And it's a problem related to network drives. I can get network to work for the most part, just directly getting to the folders, assuming I don't have network drives set up, and then it's, it's stupid. I don't blame people who getting into Linux and stuff like that, because sometimes Windows, it's just, let's face it, 
Excuse my French, but it's an operating system for basic bitches. It's supposed to accommodate the lowest common denominator. They make stuff user too user friendly, pack in too many features, and it essentially is broken by nature. Man, Windows 7 was polished though. Windows is confused. Windows is confused. Like usual, it wouldn't be the Windows we love if it wasn't confused. But, oh, sure enough. It looks like I can get back onto my network share again. Okay, disconnect the network drive, everything works again. Okay, so clearly this is something we can't do on this computer. If tape server can't do it, I'm at a loss because I don't know. Ho 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 ho. Disk internals, Linux reader, 4.7.1 is what we're using here. Let's uh, map that network drive again. Did it work? Okay, we have a Z drive now. It already has an administrator icon on it. All right. That's a network link. Why did you put disk internals? Why did you put a net, a, a link on my desktop? I want the program icon on my desktop, if anything. Come on now. Okay, well, there we go. Okay, the drive's not showing up because I need to go to device manager and scan for network. Hardware changes. What the f Huh? Oh great, more issues. Fine, well, let's let's restart it and hope the drive shows up. Device manager. Disk drive oh well, that's wonderful. The drive's not even showing up here. It's not one thing, it's another. Okay, the four terabytes online now. <laughs> Except our NAS is offline now. Wow, that's freaking wonderful, bud. Oh, I think it just came online. Okay. Disk internals, raid, archives, save, Z. Ah, still with the privileges. How are we gonna get this done? Watch, that's a pro thing. I guess I don't have a choice. Save it to the local drive on my PC and then transfer it over. Cause this is, <laughs> I'm gonna pull my hair out trying to solve these Windows networking problems. Y'all know it. I'm getting very crabby. There are veins popping out of my head here. All right, let's go ahead and get the drive. What is this scraping noise? Is there, oh, ha ha ha, the old NCIX label. Don't, oh, <laughs> don't need that anymore. That, that company's Gandhi. Okay, I heard it mount. Now, fortunately, according to my calculations, I probably have about 2.2 tears of data on that drive that I have to transfer off. And well, I have 1.9 free on my local G drive. So, well, there's no rule saying I have to do it all in one chunk. So let's go back into this program. Okay, I got a folder here, G-Sync. G-Sync, oh, G-Sync. I'm not even really an NVIDIA guy. We'll bulk grab this whole folder called NAS archives. Save it, save it. G slash sync. Save directory structure, yes, you better. Extract file date from metadata. Okay, we'll, we'll try that. Apparently there's four gigs on there. Next, next, and it's doing something now. Completing the export wizard. Okay, so that means I should have the information on here now, yes. And we certainly can't set up a network drive, but we do have the network share active. I'm going to go uh, straight up cut and paste. <sighs> okay, I think we have our strategy now. It's gonna take some time to get all this data off that drive and onto the NAS, but I believe this is ultimately the best way of doing things. I was gonna talk more about the finer points of the drive I selected, but I forgot to. So now I'll mention that is a 10 terabyte Western Digital Red, but a CMR version, not an SMR version. I think I plan to discuss more about what that means, but got distracted. Now I'm just frustrated and glad this is working out for me now. I'm not gonna bother filming the transfer process. I think this video is carried on. It's taken me three days to shoot this video. Very simple thing, and I think this is the longest filming I've done. Well, if you look in time span of three days, but really, I don't think I have that many hours of footage, but I digress. Finally, I'm gonna have a 10 terabyte NAS upgrade. That's gonna tide me over for a while. I'm gonna be able to get all the stuff off my local drive, and then that means I can phase out a spin drive in my main system. That might come later, because one plan that I have to phase out is to Leverage the second M2 slot on my motherboard to get something like the new Western Digital 2 terabyte uh, red drive that fits in the uh, 
M2 port, completely SSD, and completely no SATA cables. So that's gonna be a nice little uh, cleansing of the system. Right now, I think I'm gonna be able to uh, be holding on to that drive, or I might downgrade it. I might put my one tear in there. I don't know, I don't know. That's for the future. That's gonna be something I'm gonna sort out after. Either time, once again, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, watching me get frustrated and figure out this and, and laugh at me for fussing with Linux-based stuff on Windows, not really knowing much about Linux. Uh, easy problem solved. I bet if I looked up someone who knew Linux, they'd be like, all right, I'll fix that for you. Whatever. <laughs>